Let's be honest guys, every fitness YouTuber in history has done a million and one videos, including myself, on how to ensure you do the right things in the gym and outside the gym to get stronger and build the physique we want. But what if we are following that advice, yet unbeknown to us, we are still falling into massive pit holes that are preventing us from getting those results. So today, with that in mind, I'm going to be sharing with you some of what I believe are the biggest gym training mistakes that regardless of what you are doing in the gym is gonna continue to fuck up your results if you continue to make them. I'm gonna be guiding you through these pitfalls and how to avoid them, but first, lunch. Okay, so very few people, I think, consider what they cook their food in as a relevant component. That is wrong, obviously, it's incredibly important. Organic ghee, it's the only way to go. 500 grams or 1.1 pounds of beef. Let's go. Okay, so while that is simmering, it's about 20 to 12, I am still fasted now. The way that I actually break my fast whilst I'm cooking my lunch. Just a little bit of a hack for concurrent activity. A full scoop and a bit, because for some reason I keep going away forgetting to take this with me and I'm behind on my subscription. So one and a half scoops of Athletic Greens, AG1, in some nice cold water whilst fasted. That is the way that I break my fast pretty much every single day. If you are not a massive fan of green shakes generally, I get it, neither am I. However, this one genuinely tastes better than any other green shake I've ever had. It ain't cheap, I'll give you that, but this is endorsed by people like uh, Joe Rogan, Tim Ferriss, Andrew Huberman. These are guys that I trust in regards to their ability to diligently research healthy stuff. G1, let's get it down me. Down the hatch, wouldn't break my fast any other way. Well, that was Trez annoying. The gym was actually a hell of a lot busier than I thought for this time of the afternoon. And the music was so loud, I would definitely get stung with copyright. So I'm back here in my kitchen, but that is not gonna stop me from sharing with you what I wanted to share with you. So let's get straight into it. Number one of my five biggest muscle building mistakes is basically glorifying volume. It's too much volume, overemphasizing how much total stuff we're doing and underutilizing intensity. I think in the fitness industry generally, and I do think CrossFit has kind of perpetuated this mistake, there seems to be this huge uh, glorification of the way that a session looks on paper in terms of purely the amount of stuff on it. What a lot of people don't focus on is if a session is stripped down a little bit more, and as an example, there were, I don't know, four sets of six for two different exercises and then three sets of 12 for two more, people would be like, well, that's hardly anything. Well, it's hardly anything if you bitch out and don't fucking do it properly, but if you literally bleed for every flipping rep and you are praying for death by the time you get to the end of every single set, the chances are you're gonna elicit an amazing, strength-inducing, muscle-building response from that stimulus. But the session is the session. You can get an amazing stimulus from something that is stripped back a little bit. And I think overall, the functional fitness world does glorify volume. Everyone's training slightly submaximally, but they're just a little bit flipping adrenally fatigued from the fact that they're battered all the time. They might not really take into account some, you know, quality science-backed golden principles of strength and conditioning. Maybe focus too much on doing sessions that sound really cool when you later get to tell people that you've done this crazy amount of stuff. And as you know, if you watch some of my other videos, if you go beyond a certain amount of volume per body part per week, you enter into what's called junk volume, where basically you don't get any extra benefit from it. And if you go too far past that, it actually starts to become detrimental. And you just start binning yourself for literally no extra benefit, and in fact start eliciting huge and bringing on huge amounts of disadvantage. The second biggest mistake that I see ahead of a lot of newbies in the fitness industry doing, the guys that start by doing the typical bro split of chest day, shoulder day, back day, whatever, if you are hitting each body part only one time per week, it kind of doesn't really matter how intense it is and how even effective the stimulus is for, say, back day. If you're waiting another seven days before you hit that body part, that is just too long. So if you are doing basically less than two exposures, giving your body less than two exposures per week of each body part, the chances are you're just not training each body part frequently enough to continue to ride that wave of improvement. How do we fix this? Well, I would say individual body part split, put that in the bin straight away. That's kind of this end of the spectrum. Right at the other end of the spectrum, we've got full body sessions. 
I know Ryan Fisher uh, is a huge fan of this particular methodology. I have dabbled in that before, but something that I enjoy are two different approaches that are kind of in the middle of that frequency spectrum. Push-pull legs is one, but I prefer upper-lower conditioning. I mean, if you're not that bothered about conditioning, I mean, I advise you should be to some extent, but you can just do upper-lower break, upper-lower break, and then continue that way. I did that for years with the um, West Side for Skinny Bastards program by Joe DeFranco and his kind of collaboration with Louis Simmons as an example. And I just continued to improve for about 10 years on that. But the way that I do things now, having upper lower conditioning, my conditioning sessions, which is actually what I've just done at the gym about half an hour ago, always starts with a push pull legs 10 to one. And although it's not particularly heavy, it's not gonna be heavy enough to really stimulate your central nervous system. Even if it's not really gonna be eliciting a massive amount of anabolic stimulus in the brain and the body, it's at least getting a little bit of kind of like tissue perfusion and blood flow to the areas that I've trained so far across the course of the week, just to aid with the amount of oxygenated, nutrient-filled blood going to those areas, bit of extra growth hormone, etc. So if I do upper, lower conditioning day off, upper, lower conditioning, as an example, that might be five or six sessions a week. Even the conditioning is kind of getting a little bit of upper and lower in it as well. Number three, kind of linked to number one, but I do think it deserves its own kind of separate category. Focusing on the specifics of the program itself, instead of focusing on the effort and the application of effort and intensity that you can put into it. As an example, if you're there, like Matt Damon in fucking Goodwill Hunting, beautiful mind with a million and one different characters on the wall trying to work out this algebraic equation of whether or not you specifically should be working around sets of nine or sets of 10 and a half reps, the good news is, realistically, it doesn't matter. If you are an Olympic bronze medalist and you are trying to get to an Olympic gold, then hyper specificity is key. And realistically, if you're an Olympic medalist and you're still in the cycle for the next games, the chances are you are going to have somebody, you're going, you're going to have someone on your SNC team showing off all of his different degrees to help you work out which rep range is best for you. But the good news is, if you have a full-time job and your primary income source is not performance-based, Hyper specificity is not that key. I think a lot of people major in the minor things. If, as an example, if you're a young guy or girl that wants to focus on functional fitness at the moment with a special emphasis on running, it's not that hard to create a program that is gonna give you all of those benefits. The chances are, again, I don't know everyone's individual situation, but for 99.9% .9 of people, the best thing you can do, instead of continuing to program hop, is look at the current program that you've got and just keep fucking fighting through it and find a way to hack your motivation so every single session you are able to apply more effort to what the hell you're supposed to be doing that day. Okay, so number four, this is an interesting one and might kind of sound contrary to number three, but I don't think it is. Undervaluing preference. Basically, if you want big legs but you don't like squatting, don't squat. The good news is if you, I mean, if you wanna build an engine and you hate any kind of cardio, that's gonna be a problem. But if there are specific things that you don't like, either because, I don't know, they aggravate certain joints or you just, you just don't particularly enjoy them. As an example, if you want big, strong, athletic, functional, fit legs, but you don't like barbell back squats like me, you can find 417,000 alternatives that will give you all the same benefits without having to do that one specific movement. If somebody says squat to the king of lifts, I get it, for a lot of people they're amazing. For me, I've got long femurs, I've got deep hip sockets, I've got, I'm literally got a surgical consult about my left ankle tomorrow. So back squats are not really my thing and they never really have been, but I love lunges. I weirdly love Bulgarian split squats. I love deadlifts and RDLs. Huge fan of step ups, best exercise in the world for glute activation. So that's the good news. I think a lot of people funnel down on one thing and they're like, I wanna get a big chest as an example, so I have to do bench. I mean, I would advise it because it's a great movement, but if for some reason you just don't like doing bench press, do it with dumbbells, do it with incline, try to do some upper pec superset with some lower pec work. There are a million and one different things and I think the menu of different exercises that people can choose from is actually significantly broader than we think and I think some people just hone in on a few specific individual movements and it's a good 10 years into their fitness journey before they zoom out a little bit, look at everything in the macro and realize it's a big wide world out there and they have a hell of a lot more options to choose from than they initially thought. And my tip for you today is basically not to get caught in that holding pattern, zoom out a little bit, look at everything and then see if you just fancy doing something a little bit different. And number five, in terms of the, some of the others are a little bit more kind of psychological and emotional. This one is again, a lot more science-based like the first few. I see too many people sticking to the same rep ranges. 
I think uh, guys tend to stick to rep ranges that are very low and girls tend to stick to mid to high and basically they just fucking double down on those and they might vary exercises and they might go up and down that spectrum a little bit but overall there are three different ways that, are, that we can elicit hypertrophy, that we can elicit a muscle building response from our body. First one is something called mechanical tension and then it's something called muscular damage and then it's something called metabolic stress. So there are three different ways that we can build muscle. But if we want a good quality, well-rounded physique with good quality, well-rounded muscle mass, giving your body the novel stimulus, the new stimulus of a new rep range every now and again is a good thing. I wouldn't recommend an entire six week cycle of only doing sets of four because you're just gonna knacker your nervous system. A slightly more what's called conjugated approach. So either in a calendar week or in two calendar weeks. If you're trying to build your legs, uh, even if you did the same exercise, even if you were doing lunges, even if you were doing a couple of sets where you're doing, uh, you know, two reps either side, really, really, really flipping heavy. And you have a couple of different components of that over the course of a couple of weeks. And then two maybe where you're doing sets of six or eight each side. And then maybe where you're doing sets of 20 each side to just go for proper kind of metabolic stress, lactic tolerance pump. But linking this to what we mentioned a minute ago about specificity, the good thing is we don't need to be overly prescriptive. Again, I'll go over how to access those three in a little bit more of a prescription in a different video. But basically, look back on what you've been doing for the last few months. If you've just been sticking to sets of eight to 15 to try to put on muscle, maybe go down a little bit and do some fucking heavier stuff and get, in, get some heavy fours and fives in there for a couple of weeks. Do that for two, three weeks and then do a couple of weeks where basically you take a little bit of pressure off the central nervous system and you're just doing sets of anywhere between 15 and 25 to get a proper pump, two or three sets only, maxing out at that. So there we go guys, to summarize the five biggest muscle building mistakes I see so many young, especially guys doing in the gym. Number one, too much volume and not enough intensity. Number two, hitting each body part less than twice a week. Number three, focusing on the program itself instead of basically applying more effort to the program because hyper-specificity hyper is not that necessary. That's hard to say. Number four, undervaluing preference. There are a million and one different options if there is a specific movement or training approach that you don't like. And finally, number five, sticking to the same rep range. Different types of hypertrophy, they work at different rep ranges, and that is what we want. We want a nice, well-rounded physique and strength level. Guys, any questions on anything, please do put it down in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, aggressively smash that like button now. If you have not yet done so, make sure you subscribe, and please do check out more of my content. We've got military stuff, hybrid training stuff, functional fitness stuff, strongman competitions, OCR. All things health, performance, and physique. And as always, stronger squad on the internet. Stay strong, stay healthy, stay awesome. And I'll see you in the next video.